This is an example from the book going through the interpretation of a fully saturated conditional mean model with two dummy variables. So our y variable here is wage measured in dollars per hour. And then we have two dummy variable regressors. So d1 is an indicator function of whether somebody has a college degree. So it'll be equal to one if that's true and equal to zero otherwise. And D2 is another indicator function, but for experience being greater than 15 years. Experience meaning work experience. And just to note, I'm using the letters D to help us remember that these are dummy variables, but uh, I could have used a W or an X or whatever letter I wanted. So we are told that we run OLS on the fully saturated model, meaning we're including the interaction term also. And our estimated CMF is 10 plus 5d1 plus d2 plus 2d1 d2. So of course in practice you'll have lots of decimal points floating around, but uh, we don't need to be distracted by that for this example. So this is our estimated CMF, and we can then think about how to interpret different, uh, more economic uh, quantities based on these four uh, estimated parameters. So in other words, the 10 is like our beta hat naught, 5 is our beta hat 1, um, there's implicitly a 1 in there, beta hat 2 equals 1, and our uh, beta hat 3. So first we could ask for the low experience subpopulation, low so that's the D2 equals zero subpopulation. For that subpopulation, what is the estimated mean wage difference between individuals who do have a college degree and who don't? So, um, mean wage difference between college and not college. So if we think about low experience, we have D2 equals zero, so we'll be plugging in zero for the second argument to the CMF. And then we're looking at the difference between college, meaning we plug in D1 equals one, and no college, meaning D1 equals zero. So we'll have m hat one zero minus m hat zero zero. And if we plug in those numbers, uh, we can see when we have one zero, so we always get this first beta naught term, we always have the 10, and then when d1 equals 1, we'll get the beta hat 1 term, the 5. Uh, but if d2 equals 0, like we have here, we will not get either of the other terms. We'll just get zeros for those. 
So this is our m hat one zero, and then we're subtracting m hat zero zero, which uh, just has zero for all of the d terms because all both of the d's are zero, and we just get ten, and so the difference the tens cancel out, and we just get five, which is beta hat one, the coefficient on d1, the first dummy. We could similarly ask about that college, no college difference, but in the high experience subpopulation. So we'll do that over here. So now we're plugging in D2 equals 1 for high experience. And again, looking at the mean wage difference between the college and not college individuals. Uh, so now we'll have m hat 1, 1 minus m hat 0, 1. Now m hat 1, 1, where both d1 and d2 are 1, well d1 is 1, d2 is 1, and d1 times d2 is 1. So we'll pick up the full 10 plus 5 plus 1 plus 2, uh, all four terms. So this is 10 plus 5 plus 1 plus 2, and then minus when we have d1 equal to 1, we won't get the d1 term and we won't get the d1, t, d2 interaction term. We'll just get the 10 plus d2. which is 10 plus 1. So you can see the 10 and the 1 are going to cancel out, which will leave us with 5 plus 2, where the 5 is coming from the coefficient on d1, and the 2 is coming from that interaction term coefficient. Finally, we can see if we take the difference of these two intermediate results we've got. Then we'll have 5 plus 2 minus 5. So those 5s from the D1 term will cancel out and all we're left with is 2, which was our estimated coefficient on the interaction term. So you can see that interpretation of the coefficient and the interaction term is a bit complicated. <laughs> it's sort of this difference of two things that are themselves differences of other things, conditional means specifically. Uh, but if you plug in everything and write it out, uh, you can see exactly where that interpretation comes from.